This video is going to show you how you can compare two means derived from a within subjects design or repeated measures design in R. I'm going to show you how you can do a paired samples t test, and then I'm also going to show you how you can do a Wilcox and sign ranks test as well. So you're able to compare means for parametric as well as non parametric data. I'll also give you some advice on fact sizes and how to produce some alternative statistics as well. For this tutorial, we're going to only need two packages, the read Excel package, which because we're using Excel files and all these files are online link below this video and the F size package as well. So this is going to produce as our effect sizes for our two analyses. So the first one we're going to do is a paired samples t test. First thing we need to do is pull out our read Excel package from our library. I've already got these installed. If it's the first time you've ever used these packages, you'll need to install them as well. And then I'm going to read in my data set. So I'm going to call the data t test. I'm going to use my read Excel command and this is the location on my computer. Yours is going to be different than that. And the data set, the actual Excel file is called ttest country. So we're going to run that, get that data in, and then I'll just quickly show you the data using the view command and describe how this data was derived. So this is the data set. Essentially, um, this is about country music. And as all right minded people know, there's only two types of good music. One's country and the other one is Western. Many people don't agree with me, so I thought I'd make this experiment to show how great country music is. So essentially, I um, got a group of people and found out how many country albums they downloaded in the previous year. And then I sent them to my specially designed country boot camp in which you are woken every day at six o'clock in the morning by Hank Williams. And then for the rest of the day, you listen to magnificent country music for an entire week, having a wonderful week listening to the greatest music genre. And then after the boot camp, I explored how many country albums they downloaded in the subsequent year following my boot camp. So I've got 34 participants. This is the number of albums they downloaded before country music boot camp. And this is the number of country albums they downloaded after my country music boot camp. And I want to compare the difference between these two means to see if country music boot camp makes people like country music even more. So what I'm going to now use is the attach command. So the attach command simply attach t test. It's just going to make our recognize these column titles automatically. If I didn't use this attach command, it doesn't really matter. But instead of just writing the column titles, I would instead have to make the statement like this. So every time I said after, I'd have to write t test dollar sign after, which means pull after from the t test data set. But because I've attached it, I don't need to do that command because we're running purely off of that at the moment. So it's always worth visualizing your data. So what I'm quickly going to do is just use our box plot command and ask for a box plot for our two variables. So number of albums downloaded before and after, and then click run. This is for before and this is after. So as you can see, it certainly looks like that on average, more country music albums being downloaded after boot camp than before. Of course, we can just eyeball this, but we could actually do a t-test to compare this. So this is a t-test command for our paired samples t-test or within subjects t-test. So we just write t-test and you can see here I've written after then before. The reason I've done it that way around is because look at my box plot, the means for after are greater than before. By putting the bigger mean first, that just means I'm going to get a positive T statistic. And when I compute my effect size, it will also be positive. 
With T statistics, because it's the difference between two means, the minus doesn't mean that much. So, just for ease of interpretation, I always tend to do the larger of the two means first, and that way it always gives you a positive result. Because it's all about the interpretation of the results anyway. It doesn't matter what order you put the two things in into it. It's about understanding which group had the higher mean anyway. In this case, we're just comparing the two continuous variables. So we just write after, before. Mu zero, so that just means the null hypothesis is there's zero difference between these two groups. The alternative hypothesis is two-sided. I'm also going to ask for confidence intervals, 95% confidence intervals, and it's a paired samples t-test, so I write paired is true. So this is the full set of explicit commands for this. So if I click run now, this gives me my t-test. Here's my t-statistic, it's degrees of freedom, and it's p-value. You can also see here's my confidence intervals. And those confidence intervals relate to this mean difference here. So these are the confidence intervals for the mean difference. If I had done this the other way around, the t statistic would be the same, but it would be a minus. These would be the same, but flipped. So it would be minus 1.82 to minus 0.35. And that would be a minus as well, that mean difference. It's just a lot easier to have it reported this way around because, as I say, the minus doesn't really matter. You're just saying there's two means a difference, and it's how you write it up to explain that. So to write this up is quite straightforward. It was just appear something like that. There was a significant effect of country music bootcamp on the number of country albums downloaded, with more albums being downloaded after compared to before, and then I write up my test statistics just like this however i can actually do this a bit more simply because all these things are actually the default so instead i can simply type t test after before and then paired equals true and this gives me exactly the same results because these are the default settings if you want to change your confidence intervals to 99 you just change that if you don't have a two-sided hypothesis you can change that and so on so in fact you can write this really straightforward command instead so when you're writing this up however you know we, we've done the simple write-up but it is worth reporting our confidence intervals as well along with the mean difference and it could just look something like this so you've got that little bit of extra information so the reader also knows knows the precision of the estimates as well so we can also get our effect size for this so for that we just need to ask for Cohen's D after before and paired equals true if you run that there we go here's our Cohen's D so our effect size and very helpfully told it tells us it's medium and it also gives us confidence intervals for that Cohen's D as well so we can just add that Cohen's D to our write-up as well. So it looks something like this. So in this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to do a Wilcoxon test. The Wilcoxon test is essentially the non-parametric equivalent. So we'd use this when we have ordinal data. For example, our ordinal data set can be found in the link below and it's called Wilcoxon Country and I'm just going to run that so we've now read in our data set and we will view it here we go start end all this is is a Likert scale on a 1 to 6 Likert scale on how much people like country music at the start of the country music boot camp to the end of the country music boot camp and we want to see if we see increased scores so low scores mean you don't like country high scores mean you love country music so we want to see if our country music boot camp significantly increases liking of country music so again just like before i'm going to attach this just to make it a little bit quicker and let's do a quick box plot 
as you can see, the start score seems to be a little bit lower than the end scores. So we seem to certainly do make more positive attitudes. But let's let's explore this using our Will Coxon to test. As before, I'm gonna because the it looks like scores at the end are higher, I'm gonna put end first in our command because it just makes life a little bit easier with regards to direct the confidence intervals and so on. Here's our command. We ask for a Wilcox test. End, comma, start, mu. So the null being there's no difference. I'll, I'll turn to the hypothesis two sided. Confidence level is 95%. And this just means it's going to report our confidence interval. Paired equals true. So that means it's a paired test. And exact equals false. This is just basically, is it going to compute us what is called an exact p-value it can't do that if there's tied ranks so we, we are likely to have tied ranks and we could check the data for that but we just put exact equals false here i'll just stop giving error message and i'll show you that in a little bit more detail later on so we can just run that and here's our wilcoxon signed ranks test so here's our test statistic 375.5 and our p-value 0 0.0005. Here's the pseudo-median of this difference and the confidence intervals for that as well. So we could we could just report that there's a significant effect of country music boot camp on attitude towards country music with more positive attitudes after compared to before, and we can report this test statistic along with the p-value. Now we could as well we probably want to give this some precision of that so we can put our median difference into that as well as well as the confidence intervals for it as well so we can give that a little bit more information now with regards to doing it default there are lots of these commands are indeed the default for it so we can actually make this a little bit shorter if we want by just saying and start D that's default and that's default confidence level is a default as well so we just write it's paired is true because we need to say it's a paired test and we do need to ask for confidence intervals for the Wilcoxon test otherwise it won't produce them for us so if we click that so it gives us the same results you'll note there it gives us these error messages which is cannot compute exact P with ties and this is what I mentioned earlier so if you want to stop getting those error messages if you don't like the red on your screen because it says danger just type exact equals false and gives you the same results anyway but you get rid of those error messages there is something that's worth pointing out here and that's this test statistic here now a lot of the time people instead report a standardized test statistic a z statistic for this and um, some recommendations for APA say you should do that as well. Um, it, it won't actually compute this straight away from this command, but it is there is a way you can produce it. And essentially what you can do is we can take, if we take this and then we save this output and we'll call it, I'll call it 4Z. And what we're going to do is save this analysis as this object here for Z. We run that again. It's given us those errors because I haven't put exact equals false, but it doesn't matter. Now, what I can ask for is I can ask for if I type Q norm and then I say from for Z that I just asked for. I want you to extract the p-value and critically because it's a paired test you need the p-value divided by 2 so it's going to do a normed version of the of the p-value divided by 2 which is that gives you the z statistic gives you the norm test statistic so it's a way of back working it for this test statistic so if we do that click run here we go, here's our test statistic, 3.48. So 
So instead of reporting it as the V, we could report it as the test statistic. You don't need to worry about it being a minus. So what about an effect size? Well, we want Varga and Delaney's A effect size. So using the effect size packages command, we just ask for VDA and start. And again, paired equals true. So it's very similar to what we did with Cohen's D, but we're asking for this statistic instead. We click run. There we go. We get an estimate of that effect size of 0.72. And again, helpfully, it gives us as a medium effect. So it's given us that little bit of extra information there. So we can add that effect size to our write-up as well. And that covers the two forms of paired samples test that you can do in R. The code with annotations on it is below the video, as is these data sets for you to practice on yourselves. And also on the YouTube channel, you see I've got a playlist of some great country music as well that you should all listen to because it is the best type of music. So if you enjoyed that, there's lots of other videos online, lots more R tutorials for you to develop your R skills with.